right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. What a powerful story about answering God's call to what you're supposed to be doing in your life, which segues perfectly into what I want to talk to you guys about today. So, when you're reading the Bible or hearing the um, Gospels on Sunday, and it talks about Jesus, you know, someone comes up and asks Jesus for help or um, asks him to do something, how do those stories usually go? This is your, your talk. Is he usually sitting there, man, I wish somebody would come up and ask me for help. Because I really want to help somebody right now. Is that usually how it goes? No. No. It's usually like the most awkward time, right? He's trying to preach and they're lowering somebody down in the roof and they're like, hey, you've got to help my friend right now. He's like, I didn't say I was going to help your friend right now. I'm here to preach, right? That happens to us too, right? So what I've learned in my experience, and I'm sure you've experienced it too, you're like in your zone, you're doing your thing, you're hanging out downtown. Um, I hang out downtown a lot, but, and all of a sudden someone says, hey, can I have a dollar? And you're like, I'm getting ready to go out to eat. I'm going to spend $30 on dinner. I don't have a dollar for you, right? Or some other random thought that pops in your head, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of inconvenience you, maybe puts you off. You don't quite get it. So here's the good news. The good news is that we're not supposed to be Jesus. We don't have to help everybody. We don't have to do everything. We don't cure illnesses. We don't make the blind see. The apostles, right? So the apostles, after Jesus um, went into heaven, how are we going to say that? Can I find the right words right now? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, so after that, right? So it was the apostles' job to go out into the world and spread the good news of the gospel, to do charitable works help people understand what Jesus' life was about. And they did a lot of great work using their skills. Here's the other good news. We're not apostles, right? You know, does anybody think they're an apostle? Or Jesus? We should get that out of <laughs> It happens, it happens. But here's the thing. We are disciples. We are called to live out Jesus' and the apostles' will here on this earth. There's a lot of obligation that comes with it. That means that each of us in this room are responsible for making sure that other people have enough food to eat, they have enough clothes, they get the right education, all of that good stuff. Everything that we enjoy on a daily basis, all human beings on the planet enjoy those exact same privileges and basic needs. Maybe not privileges, we'll back that up, but they, if they deserve all those basic needs. So if I'm hungry during the day and someone else is hungry, that's important. Like Those needs have to be met, and it's my responsibility to make sure that not only that do I eat, but that homeless man in downtown Indianapolis or the homeless man here in Hamilton County gets fed, too. Those are our responsibilities. So, um, do you guys have any questions about any of that? No? Okay. So just a little bit of intro. That's really the basic foundational elements of Catholic social teaching. It's 150 years of principles and tradition around our obligations as Catholics, as human beings, to other people. And it's really important. And one of the ways that that gets carried out is through Catholic charities. And um, in the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, which is a whole, what, two miles that way, a mile that way or so? Nice catch. Yeah. Nice catch. No, thank you. Yeah. I'm very clumsy. I should have warned you guys. You probably don't want to sit there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, one of the ways that the church lives out this obligation is through Catholic charities. And in the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, we have uh, five agencies that operate out of Indianapolis, Terre Haute, Bloomington, Tell City, and New Albany, Indiana. And we also have a disaster coordinator, well now we have two, including myself, that a disaster coordinator that we deploy during disasters. Um, and you all are aware of the tornadoes that hit on March 2nd of 2012, and we, those tornadoes hit on a what, 3.30 on Friday? Jane Crady, our other disaster coordinator, was down there Friday at 8 a.m. helping folks and figuring out what was going on. So she lives in Shelbyville, Indiana. She's rebuilt 650 homes in Waveland, Mississippi after Hurricane Katrina. Um, she's a trained addictions counselor. She is, she is awesome. Um, but so in terms of our, so today I want to cover, cover a few other things besides disaster relief. Um, the general work of Catholic Charities, and then also talk to you guys about Justice Walking, a program for Just Faith that I thought you might be interested in, and show you a couple of videos along the way. But um, so, where did those tornadoes hit? What, where have you guys seen on the news? Mm -hmm. 
Um, but lot, we hear lots of stories like this. People living through very traumatic things where, you know, when it starts raining, now they're scared for their life because they've just experienced something very devastating. And their homes are gone, you know, so they need somewhere to stay and they need help. And that's how we help. Um, or that's how we um, do it. So, a couple of things that I want you guys to remember about volunteering and disaster relief. So, these are questions I answer all the time for folks. First of all, don't ever just show up and expect a volunteer to volunteer at a disaster relief. Make plans with the coordinator. So, at Catholic Charities, we, we rebuild homes. So, we're scheduling volunteers for May, June, and July for folks to rebuild homes. Um, so make sure you make plans to show up. And remember that it's a disaster zone. We get lots of people who just show up and want to help, which is awesome. But it's usually not the right time because we're not organized for you just to show up. Um, and it's a disaster zone. So um, when I was down there, about a week after the event, they had all these Department of Corrections guys. So they had all these people who are normally in prison literally hauling trees off the highway. That is not a place for someone who normally works in an office, right? So um, just make sure you know what you're getting into. Um, you wear your work boots, and it, it's a very serious place. So, um, and I, one of the most important things is always ask how you can help in these situations. Um, don't assume that what you think somebody needs is actually what they need. I'm getting um, email requests for somebody wanted to donate Easter baskets to us. That's awesome, Easter baskets. I love Easter baskets. I actually, my fiance, I was like, I will get an Easter basket every year because I love Easter. Um, but during a disaster, like, not the most important thing for me to be coordinating right now. So just think and ask about what these folks need before you offer to help. Um, one woman emailed. I mean, you'll get we'll get all sorts of crazy requests. It's kind of fun sometimes to read these emails. Like someone said, I want to give you a propane tank. <laughs> I don't know what to do with a propane tank, right? I'm going to catch some things on fire, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but if you guys want to help, here's what we need. We need people who are willing to work really hard to rebuild people's homes. We need folks who are willing to donate money, to buy roofing supplies, to buy drywall, all of those things. Um, it takes a lot of money to rebuild a house, and it's really important work. And um, those are the two best ways to help now, as well as gift cards to Walmart and Lowe's and Home Depot and some of those things. Those are very helpful. But um, I would ask you guys, um, we can take volunteers ages 15 and up if you want to help out. Um, talk to your parents, talk to you know, other folks in the parish um, to schedule a trip during your summertime off. You guys okay down there? I'm not coming down. Oh, then you're not coming down, no way? No. Though, unfortunately, there'll be another disaster once you are 15, so I'll just look into that one. Unfortunately? Huh? Unfortunately. Unfortunately.